Hello you guys, it's Katie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I have my tips for making amigurumi slash plushies. So as you guys know, I primarily make amigurumi and plushies. That's what I make crochet patterns for. That's what I sell. So basically the only time I make anything other than plushies is when I'm making something for myself or for a gift for somebody. So I have a lot of experience, so I thought today's video would be a good one to share whether you've been crocheting for a long time and you want to try making plushies for the first time, or you have not crocheted ever before and you're really interested in making plushies. I hope my tips can help you guys. So these are also just a couple of tips, so if you do want more, let me know. I could definitely do a part two of this video. And yeah, I just hope this video is helpful. Even if you have made plushies before and you just want to like perfect the technique, all of that kind of stuff, I just hope you find this helpful. So I have a list on my phone, so I'm just going to go in order and tell you everything. So I also have a couple of plushies and yarns and stuff that I'm going to show you as examples throughout this video. So first I have go down in hook size so that there will be no holes in your projects. So, for an example, this little egg I made with Burnett Baby Blanket yarns, the colors Buttercup and White, and on Burnett Blanket yarns, they suggest an 8mm crochet hook, which if you are a complete beginner and you're not sure on yarn weights and how to tell what hook you should use and all of that, I do have a video on that, so I will leave that linked below. As well as I'll link quite a few other videos that I think will be helpful for you if you are a beginner. But anyways, this yarn is a super bulky number 6 and on the packaging it has 8mm hook listed. I do use 8mm hooks with this yarn sometimes, but typically I use a 7mm, which is what I made this with. As well as this little bee, which is also buttercup and white in baby blanket and then coal in regular blanket but anyways yes i typically use a seven millimeter just so that there won't be any holes or any gaps in the project because if you do have gaps in your project you can see stuffing through it which of course does not look the best so that is just a tip for you if you are wanting to make plushies I definitely recommend at least going down one hook size for whatever yarn you're using, if not even more, depending on the yarn. So I'll give you another few examples of that. So this is the Jess Chenille yarn from Dollar Tree, which this yarn also suggests 8mm hooks, which is crazy because you can tell the thickness of this yarn and this yarn are quite a bit different. This is way thicker than this. So I actually use like a 5 or a 6 millimeter hook with this yarn and this one I use a 7. So this one I go down quite a few sizes from what it recommends versus this one I only go down one. So it does just depend on the yarn and also as you crochet different things you will get used to whatever hook size feels right for you with different yarns so it is kind of just trial and error. And that is a big thing for making plushies and just crocheting in general, it is trial and error. So it is going to take time, but eventually you will learn what works best for you and all of that kind of stuff. And something to also keep in mind is your tension is also going to depend on your hook size. So I'd say I have a pretty normal tension. Sometimes my tension can be tight as I'm crocheting, so that is also going to depend on that. Sometimes I do use an 8mm with the Burnett blanket, which is what it suggests, because my tension can be tight, but sometimes I also use a 7 if my stitches are kind of looser that day. So it just depends. Anyways, next tip, which I think might be one of the most important ones to be honest, is to use stitch markers. So when you're making amigurumi and plushies, which I feel like I always say amigurumi wrong, so I apologize if I am throughout this video, but you guys know what I mean. But anyway, as you are making plushies, you're going to be working in a round. So if you've crocheted before, more than likely you have started out with making a chain 
and then doing your stitches on top of that chain and working from there. If you're making something like a blanket or a dishcloth or a lot of clothing, that kind of stuff will start with just a chain. But plushies will start with a circle at the top and then you just work down. So that was the case with this egg as well as this B. It started here and then it kept going. So something that's going to help you to keep track is a stitch marker. For me personally, as I'm working, I keep the stitch marker in the last stitch of each round, but you can also keep it in the first stitch of each round, or you could use multiple stitch markers for every place where you need to increase, or every like five stitches use a stitch marker. However you need to work it, but stitch markers are definitely useful for everybody, but especially for beginners. And a lot of patterns are written for you to use stitch markers with. Every pattern that I make is written for people to use stitch markers with because it's just so much easier. So definitely, definitely use stitch markers. So something that was also really complicated for me as a beginner was knowing how to count different rows. So some things to help you with that are tools like these, which these are row counters slash stitch counters because you could technically use them for like every single stitch but typically I use them for every row so once I finish a row or a round in a project I will with this one just click it and the number will change one two three and with this one you just press the button and it will change to the next number I'm not gonna press it actually though because I have it going for a project right now and then for this one, there's just a reset button for it to go back to zero. And for this one, there are these little dials on the side that move back and forth for you to go back to zero. So these are both very useful. I typically prefer this one, which is digital, but these are a little bit more pricey. So if you're just starting out, you might want to use something like this. I got this recently and I've had this one for a long time. So this is what I started out with. And if you don't want to invest in anything like this, you can also just make tally marks on a piece of paper as easily as using one of these. So anyway, that is just something that I recommend. And over time, you will learn how to count your rows. If you want to look up a video of maybe how to count rows when you're making anagurumi or plushies, that might be a good idea so you can kind of learn what each row looks like. But from my personal experience when I was learning, I just kind of learned what each row looked like as I was working after time. So yeah, before that though, definitely use something like this or just tally marks in order to keep track of which row because most of the time it's going to be different for each row for the amount of stitches you have to do. So that is definitely a good thing to use along with a stitch marker. And for me, since I place the stitch marker at the end of every round, I take the stitch marker out, do the last stitch, change the row, put the stitch marker back in, and then continue that process. If you guys are interested in little things like this to use, or stitch markers, I can link those below for you from Amazon. They have a bunch in bulk for the stitch markers and these for like decent prices as well. So yeah, that'll be below. But those are definitely good things for you to use as a beginner. Or even if you're just new to making plushies and you're not exactly sure how to count the rows. Next thing, I don't know if you'd really consider this a tip or not, but I definitely recommend using safety eyes. You can also embroider eyes or you could use button eyes or something like that. But safety eyes come in huge packs on Amazon for pretty cheap. So I definitely recommend just using safety eyes, getting a bunch of them, get a variety pack that has multiple sizes, all of that kind of stuff. And just using safety eyes. In a lot of patterns, it will tell you where to place the eyes. In my patterns, I specifically write which rounds I placed it in and how many stitches in between. So if you want it to look exactly like mine for my patterns, then of course I include that information. 
or you can just try putting them in different spots until you figure out where you like it and then place the backing but I definitely recommend using safety eyes whether you're a beginner or just in general but you could also use felt if you don't have safety eyes and I do use felt for some specific projects like for example this little trick-or-treating ghost pattern which is by me I used safety eyes for the regular eyes for the ghost but then I wanted a triangle shape for the pumpkin so this is pieces of felt and hot glue so that's also another good way to make faces that I also use quite often but my main go-to is just safety eyes because they are so much easier and they stay really well so yeah I definitely recommend investing in safety eyes as well so my next tip is to just be generous with your stuffing make sure you are adding enough so I'm gonna show you two examples of one thing that I crocheted probably like months after I learned to crochet and then one thing that I crocheted recently so you can tell the difference so this is a little Frankenstein that I think I made like a couple months after I learned to crochet which it doesn't look bad but as you can tell the head is a little bit of a weird shape and it's all like the shaping is just what's messed up with it and the shaping is what you can really change with stuffing so if I put a lot more stuffing in the head as well as in the body the shape would be a lot better and it would be more circular just make sure you're adding enough stuffing as you make something because again for this little egg it's just like perfectly flat there is plenty of stuffing in here and for something like this there's just not as much and I feel like it's probably hard for you to tell on camera but definitely in person I can like squeeze this a lot more and like the shape just does not look right versus if I added a lot more stuffing the head would be a proper circle and all of that kind of stuff so make sure you're adding enough stuffing and you can even use scraps of yarn as stuffing so what I personally like to do when I'm using scraps of yarn is I will stuff the outside kind of make like a border around the area that I actually crocheted and then on the inside you can add scraps of yarn so that is a cheaper alternative to using polyfill or stuffing in general that you buy from the store so I do like to use a combination of both but you just want to make sure that you have enough so that it's going to keep its shape and another thing with stuffing is you can also like change the shape and the whole look of something you're crocheting just with stuffing so a lot of times when you make a magic circle and you start out a project it will be like really pointy at the top even when I started this egg it was really pointy at the top which of course it's not supposed to be pointy so when I was adding stuffing I just made sure that I added plenty of stuffing to this little egg that way it would be a circle shape instead of a pointed like triangle so also keep that in mind as you are adding stuffing that it can really impact the way it's going to look at the end next another tip for you is to pin items in place as you are sewing them so in a lot of patterns unless a pattern says no sew you will have to sew on different items so example again this Frankenstein that I made very early on the little bolts on the side of his head the arms and the legs were items that had to be sewed on so pinning them in place where you want them to be before you sew them so that you can look at it and say okay these arms are even right here so I'm gonna pin them in place and then I'm gonna sew them on is really helpful instead of just putting one arm on and then the other one and then being like oh no one is more like here and the other one's like down here you know <laughs> a lot of times I use stitch markers to pin things so another example if I'm making a bee like this one and I want to sew on the wings and make sure that they're gonna be aligned with the face I can just put this stitch marker right here maybe use two of them or something like that and this will hold it in place as I'm sewing and then once I'm done sewing just remove this stitch marker and it's in the right place 
You could also use pins that you would typically use for sewing for something like this, but I tend to use stitch markers because it's something that I already have around me as I'm making the project. So that is definitely something that I recommend so that things will look like they're in the proper spot because once you sew something on, it is very hard to remove it and put it back on. So I definitely recommend pinning items on beforehand so that they'll look good the first try. Now the next thing is your yarn weight and hook size can change a pattern completely. So for this I'm again using my Trick or Treating Ghost as an example. So this original one was made with Barnett Blanket Yarns and a 7mm hook. And then this one that I made the second time was made with Parfait Chunky and a 6mm hook. So you can tell just by changing the yarn and the hook size, the size of the project is different. I changed nothing about the stitches, the amount of rows, anything like that. These patterns are exactly the same, just the hook size and the yarn size. So for example, if you see a pattern like this one and you really want to make it, but you don't want it to be as big as the pattern says it's going to be, and it's made with a chunkier yarn, you could make this with a thinner yarn and it would come out to be smaller. Or if you see something that is made with a thin yarn and you wanted it to be like twice the size, then you could use a chunky yarn and that would also give you the same effect. So that's definitely something that is really cool and that I wanted to share in this video because I definitely did not know that as I was starting out with making crochet plushies. I thought that I had to just use the same yarn type as the person that made the pattern and the same hook and everything, but that is not the case at all. So yeah, you can definitely switch things up. Just make sure you're using a hook size that is appropriate for whatever yarn you are using. But I definitely just love changing up the hook size and the yarn size for different patterns and just seeing the size difference. So the next thing I recommend is learning the magic circle. So the magic circle, like I already mentioned, is what most patterns start out with whenever you're making a plushie. So like this one, the magic circle is right here and then you continue to do stitches downward. And again, the magic circle is here and then you continue to do stitches this way. So most patterns have you do a magic circle. It is probably one of the most difficult parts of any plushie. But once you have learned it, you will be so glad that you did. There are workarounds for other ways to do it, like the chain two method, and then working into the second chain. But a magic circle, in my opinion, just looks so much cleaner with your stitches. If you do the chain two method, you could have a hole up here where you see stuffing through it. So definitely just sit down and take the time to learn a magic circle if you are going to be making plushies. Because again, almost every single pattern is going to start out with a magic circle. And I know it can be difficult, but find a couple different tutorials, maybe where people are explaining it in different ways. And I promise you at some point it will click. For me, I had been making plushies for a long, long time. And half the time when I would do a magic circle, it would work. Half the time when I would do it, it wouldn't. But then one day it just clicked for me what I was doing wrong. And now every time I make a magic circle, it works first try. So I definitely recommend just sitting down and practicing with magic circles. And again, after time you will just learn and it will click for you. And now my final thing that I wanted to say in this video that I kind of already mentioned throughout this video, but seriously, practice makes perfect. So if you want to get really good at crocheting plushies and you see people like me or other people on Instagram or YouTube or whatever that make plushies and sell them or sell the patterns or whatever and you think, oh my gosh, I would like to do that but the stuff I'm making does not look like their stuff. Seriously, practice does make perfect or at least it makes progress because I still don't think I'm perfect even after crocheting for almost four years. And... It really does just take time to understand the magic circle and working in the round and how to stuff things properly 
all of that kind of stuff that I covered in this video as well as other tips. It does just take a long time to get used to and just doing it over and over again, repeating the process is the best way to learn and perfect those skills. Just like with any hobby or anything you ever do, you are going to get better over time. So don't get discouraged and all you can do is your best and I hope these tips really do help you guys. Whether you have crocheted for a long time or you've never crocheted at all. So anyways though with all of that thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did please do give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of this video or if there's any other tips that you would like to share with others that I did not mention in this video. I would love to hear that and maybe I can mention those in a part two of this video if you guys want to see a part two. And if you guys want to make sure you don't miss out on any videos like this one, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell. That way you know every single time I upload a brand new video. And if you do want to see more from me, you can always check out more videos of mine, my blog, my Etsy shop, my Ribbler shop, all of my social medias, and my second channel. All of that is always included in the description box down below for you guys. As well as for this video, I have quite a few other videos linked below that I think would be helpful for you if you are a complete beginner and want to start crocheting. So with all of that though, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys here in the next one. Goodbye!